Good day everyone and welcome to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Mercy Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we are going to be talking about the blood. When you hear the blood, what comes to our mind? We all have this general definition that blood is a fluid that transports carbon dioxide and oxygen. You are right, but there is more to blood than just that simple definition. So by the end of this class, you should be able to tell me what blood is all about, the types of blood, the components of blood, and also the function of the various components of blood. So what is blood? Can you drop your answer in the comment section? Why drop my the blood? No cheating. Blood is a connective tissue in fluid form. Right. Blood is a connective tissue in fluid form. When we say tissue, what do we mean? Blood is simply a combination of similar cells. Similar cells are coming together to form blood, which is a tissue. Let me take us back to our biology. In our biology class, we are taught that when cells come together, they form what? They form tissue, right? When tissue come together, they form what? They form organ. And when organ come together, they form system. Wow. So cells coming together, they form tissue. And now we are telling you that blood is a connective tissue. So blood is a combination of similar cells. Similar cells are coming together to form what? Blood. That is why we say blood is a tissue. Blood is neither an organ nor a system. Rather, blood is a tissue. You all will agree with me that blood is in fluid form. It is not in solid form. So as I would say, blood is a connective tissue in fluid form. Then that takes us to the types of blood. There are actually two types of blood. We have the oxygenated blood. The oxygenated blood. And the second is the deoxygenated blood. I'll throw a little light on this. Oxygenated blood, as the name implies, it simply means there is a lot of oxygen in it. A lot. When I mean a lot, there is a lot of oxygen in it. And this particular blood, blood is bright red. Like, bright red. It has a lot of oxygen. It has a lot of nutrients in it. So it's fresh. So this particular blood, as earlier said, it's bright red. And it is found in all arteries, except one. Guess the pulmonary artery. So you can find oxygenated blood in all arteries except the pulmonary artery. Then that takes us to the second one, which is the deoxygenated blood. The deoxygenated blood contains little oxygen in it with plenty carbon dioxide. It has a lot of waste in it. It's no longer fresh. So this is deoxygenated blood. is dark red. Hmm. You can see this one is bright red, but this one is dark red. Yeah. The deoxygenated blood is dark red and it is found in all veins except what? The pulmonary veins. The deoxygenated blood is found in all veins except the pulmonary veins. Hope we get that now. Remember what I said? The oxygenated blood has plenty of oxygen and nutrients in it. It is bright red. The deoxygenated blood has little oxygen in it. So it's what? It's dark red. Then it takes us to the components of blood. Components of what? Of blood. Sorry, I had to pick this. <laughs> then it takes us to the components of blood. There are actually two major components of blood. The first being the plasma. And the second is the cells. The first is the plasma. And the second is the cells. Let's talk about the plasma first before we go into the cells. The plasma makes up 55% of the total blood volume. The plasma makes up 55% of the total blood volume. For example, this is our sample bottle. Mm? And the blood is collected. 
when the blood is collected into the sample bottle, 55% of this particular blood is plasma, while the remaining 45% is your cells. So from here, let's say down, from here down is your cells, while here up is your plasma. You can see the plasma is forming boss. The plasma is like it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's the boss of all boss. Let's keep it that way. So the plasma makes up 55% of the total blood volume. Why the for the many 45% are actually your cells? So let's talk about the plasma in details. Plasma, as I said, is made up of 5%. It's made up of 90 to 92% water. So when you see plasma, what comes to your mind that majority or the most how level is that? Okay, when you hear plasma, just know that most of the content of the plasma is what is water. But it has a lot of substance dissolving it. You get now. So some of the substance dissolved in plasma, the first is sorry? Alright. The first is the protein. The protein is found in the plasma. This protein actually helps to increase the viscosity of the blood. It makes our blood thicker. It increases the viscosity of the blood. And we actually have three proteins. The first is the globulin. The second, albumin. And the third, fibrinogen. So these are the three proteins that are found in the plasma. Then the second type of um, content, second content found in the plasma, the second is your nutrients. Nutrients such as glucose, amino acid, vitamins, they are found in the plasma and they are being taken to their target tissues and organs to carry out their various function. Then waste. Waste. Waste is also found in your plasma. For example, your urea, they are also found inside the plasma and they are transported out of the body. Another thing found in your plasma, we have electrolytes, such as your sodium, your chloride, they are found in the plasma. Then we also have your hormones. Hormones are found in the plasma. Then gases, such as your carbon dioxide and oxygen, are found in the plasma. Let's go by it. We said that plasma is makes up 55% of the total blood volume. Inside this plasma, 90 to 92% is water. 90 to 92% of plasma is water, but it has other substances being dissolved in it. The first is the protein. And examples of the protein are your globulin, albumin, and your fibrinogen. Then the other one we have nutrients such as your amino acid. Your, uh, your amino acid, your glucose, your vitamins, the waste products such as urea, they are found in the plasma. Electrolytes, hormones, gases, they are also all found in the plasma. Then that takes us to the other parts of the components of the blood cells, of the blood, which is the cells, this second one here. So in terms of the cells, we have three cells we want to talk about, little, little. We're not going to talk about them in details. Our, our subsequent lecture will discuss more on these cells. We have three, which is the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets. In terms of the red blood cells, the red blood cells, they don't have nucleus in them. That is why they are enucleated. They actually contain what we call hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is one of the most important pigments in our body. And it actually helps in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. That particular hemoglobin is found in the red blood cells. So you can see red blood cells are very, very important. So red blood cells contain hemoglobin which is important for the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Then the red blood cells are also known as erythrocytes. We'll explain more in our next class when we're talking about the formation of red blood cells. Then the second is the white blood cells. The white blood cells are actually divided into two, the granulocytes, the granulocytes, and the agranulocytes. 
the granulose site and the a granulose site this granulose site also has subsection your monocytes, your lymphocytes, your eosinophils, your basophils, and your neutrophils. This will be discussed in details in our other class. So these are the components of the white blood cells. When you hear white blood cells, what should come to your mind is that the soldiers in the body, that the ones fighting infections, that the ones fighting bacteria, that the ones fighting bacteria, viruses, that the ones helping us build our immune system. So whenever you hear white blood cells, just talk about just what comes to your mind should be immune system. What comes to your mind is defense. They are protecting the body. Then the other is the platelet. The platelet is also known as strobocytes. While the white blood cells is also known as leukocytes. The platelet is also known as strobocytes. Whenever you hear the platelet, what should come to your mind is blood clotting. The platelet is very, very important when it comes to blood clotting. I think that is all, like more or less like an introduction to our classes that will be taking place this week. So, let's take us back. We said that blood is a connective tissue in fluid form. There are two types of blood, the oxygenated blood and the deoxygenated blood. We also said that there are two major components of blood, which is the plasma and the cells. And we said that the plasma is made up of 90 to 92 percent water in which all these substances are dissolved in it they will talk about the cells where we say we have the red blood cells also known as erythrocytes and the red blood cells helps in it because of the presence of hemoglobin it helps to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide then the second is the white blood cells which is also known as the leukocytes and they actually help us with defense, protection, and immunity. Then the last is the platelet, which is also known as strobocytes, and it actually helps us with what? Blood clotting. Thank you for very much for staying to the end. So you don't miss out of our subsequent classes that will be coming up Wednesdays and Friday. Can you click on the subscribe button? Turn on the notification button so you get notified immediately our classes are dropped.